Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Let's peek at the Worm Factory 360 and see what's going on down here. So this is just a damp newspaper I've had up there. So little by little, as I cook, I've been feeding this bin. And I usually go corner to corner and I do throw orange peels in here. I throw everything in here, guys. <laughs> but as you can tell, the worms are doing fine. So in this bin, in this tower, I have four species of worms. I have red wigglers, Yesenia fatida. I have European nightcrawlers, African nightcrawlers, and Louisiana swamp worms. There are no blue worms in here. And they're doing fine. They live together in here. Now, I'm not sure how many more of which species I have because they're just all in here. But as you can see, they're still like they're composting everything beautifully. I look at those castings. They're doing a great job. These are some uh, older uh, apples. Let me poke a hole in it. Sometimes apples take a little bit to, um, you know, to break down. They just do. But this one, as you can see, it's starting to get yucky. So I'm just going to help it a little bit by poking a hole in it. And this is another one. Yeah, apples break up. They take time, but they will eventually. So over here, I had some breakfast grits that I had left over that I didn't use. Like there was like this much left in the container. So I would just throw it in here instead of throwing it out. And here we have an avocado seed that is starting to sprout. Look at that. So it goes to show you how fertile castings are. So these castings, since this is my like hobby and they take care of my kitchen food scraps, I'm not going to be sifting out the cocoons from here. I'm just going to sell the castings with the cocoons if you want them. Um, you can always put them in your bin, keep them moist, and then you'll have the four different types of worms in your bin eventually, you know, once they hatch. So worms. They lay cocoons every 21 days. See, this is a banana. I'm just gonna keep in here. I'll bury it in the corner. I just bury things to help them out. And if there's gonna be any odor, it'll mask it, which honestly, there really never is. There never is odor. Um, look how cool. So they're doing great. There's a lot of young worms in here. So you can see, like, look at that little baby right there. He's tiny. So eventually, you know, they're going to eat this paper. They're going to eat everything and orange peels. I do put onions in my bin. And I know I put all the forbidden things, but, you know, this is a working kitchen. I don't have time to, like, fuss with what goes where. And I just throw it all in here and let them handle it. This is an onion peel. Um, I throw my garlic peels in here. The thing is, you you can do those things. Just don't do it in excessive amounts. Don't go making like lemonade this summer and then going and throwing an entire thing of lemons in here because you're going to have a problem. So even though um, I don't fluff up my breeder bins, by the way, if you're new here, press that subscribe button and give me that thumbs up. And... I have another worm channel if you're interested. It's the Garden and Worm Lady. And check me out over there. So I don't fluff up my breeder bins because it disturbs them. Look, look at the tip of that banana. <laughs> look at that. They're all in there. I do fluff up my towers. It gets oxygen in there and it helps them to just break everything up. So I have four towers. 
Um, I've always loved towers. I'm obsessed with them. My husband, Joe, gets me a tower once in a while for a holiday or something. Look, this is a, this is an onion. I'm just going to put it back. And, you know, onions obviously have a strong odor. Um, I don't smell that one. <laughs> My worms eat everything. So, I try to, uh, oh, look at this one, how much. I'm going to break it up. I try to rotate the corners, but honestly, sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. I should put something to mark it. Maybe I'll do that with like an onion peel or something. All right, let's see. What do I have today to feed them? I know I have something. Okay. So I did eat an orange today. And I have a plantain that went bad. Let me try to fix this. So it's over ripened, even though you eat them ripe, but it's just too ripe. So I'm gonna try to rip it here just to give them a head start. Oh, I don't know about you, but I love the smell of plantains. And I'm just gonna bury it. Now, eventually these castings will end up as fertilizer in my garden and I make worm tea out of them and you know if people want to buy it I sell it now the castings I sell from my breeder bins down there they don't have cocoons in them but these will unless you ask me um, that you want them removed and then you know you'll get them removed but a lot of people want the cocoons so so since I put the um, plantain here in the middle, I'm going to put this on top of it. And the rest of the, the orange here, I'm going to bury. Let's bury. Now you have to be careful because you can very easily overfeed a bin. And if you overfeed a bin, you're going to know it because it's going to smell a little weird. And that's the last thing you want because then if it turns acidic on you or goes sour in a really bad way, the worms are going to run. And you don't want that because you don't want to wake up one day and you're going to have worms everywhere crawling out of the sides. I've seen videos of people's worms crawling out of the sides. Oh my gosh. It's never happened to me, but you know, you never know. So I really keep a close eye on my bins and just try to keep them all balanced. So let me get some uh, shredded paper for them. So I wanted to show you two of the worms that I found here on the lid. This is a European nightcrawler. And this, guess what he is? He's an African nightcrawler. He's a young one, but look at the difference in color and size. Pretty amazing, huh? So basically when I have newspaper, I just shred it and I just throw it in here like this. And I dampen it and then I cover it. And the worms, you know, they keep going at it. Anytime I feed, I just go like this. I put my food and I move that back. So, it's a great way to use up newspaper, junk mail, you know, boxes from, you know, Amazon or whatever you shop online for. And then once this, this floor starts getting full, then I add the second floor on top. And this one just continues to do its thing. And then the second one on top will be the working tray. I saw a guy have seven high. And boy, I was impressed. I'm like, I'm surprised that it held the weight because you'll know that as you start learning this, um, these things, once they start getting full of castings, they get very heavy. And that thing withstood seven floors. I'm like, whoo, that was amazing. All right. So let me know what you think. Press that subscribe button and, uh, I'll see you all next time. Take care.